Test, test, werkt hem. Can you hear me? I hear a bit of echo here and there, but... Yeah? Okay, perfect. So good morning everyone and uh, welcome to Vineyard Brussels on this uh, Sunday the 7th of February 2021. Um, I don't know about you but when I looked out my window this morning, you know, the snow that is just instant happiness for me. And then I also realized that I was getting a bit older because my next question in my head was, I hope that there isn't uh, too much snow on the roads so that, you know, I can actually get to church safely. Um, but actually that is one of the advantages that we have of doing church the way that we're currently having to do church. That is, you know, when you woke up this morning, you didn't need to think about, you know, will my car start? Or, you know, will my bus or my metro or my tram be on time? And will I need to rush to get to church? No, you could just get up, take a coffee, uh, have a tea, and just indeed join us uh, like you're doing right now. Um, and actually today that has uh, been enhanced even more because... Some of you might know that uh, we've started with an uh, online gathering before the, uh, the actual service today where we can actually have a coffee gathering together. So that's something that we will uh, do again for the next couple of weeks as well. So starting at 10 past 10, have an online coffee break. So again, another way to connect with each other. Because uh, you might have seen as well that the byline of uh, Vineyard Brussels is to connect with God and people. 
And this is actually my prayer for you this morning. That is, Lord, Lord, we just pray for more connection. More connection, Lord, with you and with each other. Lord, I pray that you continue to inspire us through worship today, through what Ricky will share with us, so that we know more about you want in our lives, but that there are also new ways, different ways to connect with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to be here with us today. Let's welcome the, the Holy Spirit right now. Wherever you are in your, in your house, just pray that the Holy Spirit will come and that you can feel His presence. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord, I've tasted and seen. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of lusts, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fly.
Our God is a God that can do anything. Our God, He is great, He is amazing, and He loves us the way we are. No matter how you, uh, no matter how you are feeling today, how was your week, what has been happening in your life, God knows every single detail. And He just really and simply loves you the way you are, for who you are, and and He does want to be close to you. Jesus wants to have a relationship with you today and forever. Let's praise Him now and say, our God, He is He is God. He is uh, He is greater. He is. The God that is really is stronger than anything. And we can trust Him and we can trust His name.
God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, our summing power, our God, our God, oh he is, he is, he is. Jesus is here, welcoming you. If you're hurting today, if you're feeling broken inside, He is here to heal your heart. for you on the cross so that you could be with him today he forgives you he is our savior
give you forgiveness and everything that you have been asking him. He has his own time, but he is God. He is our God. Come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide for you. Let's sing one more time. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for us. Thank you for loving us. Amen. We all have that person in our lives. That neighbor we pass by every day outside our homes. That coworker we see at the office five days a week or those friends we catch up with every once in a while. People we wish could know and experience the love of God. How do we share it? Where do we even start? Deep inside, we know that it'll cost us something to open up our lives and share our faith. It takes time, vulnerability, sacrifice, the risk of rejection. But this is our call, to open our lives and to share Christ with the people close to us. Because it's only through opening your life up that spaces for honest conversations are possible. Spaces where people can truly be themselves and explore the deepest parts of life with people they know and trust. That's why we're running Alpha, it's a course over several weeks where you can invite your friends to explore life's biggest questions over a meal. It's a chance for you to invite that person into an honest conversation about faith. Because when it's hard to find the moment, or the words, or the courage, you can simply invite. Alpha, who will you invite? So when I read the uh, community news email that uh, some of you might also have received uh, this week, I was actually pleasantly surprised by the really huge amount of ways to connect, not only with God, but also with each other. Just a couple of examples. So um, each Sunday, now between uh, 9.30 and 10, we will uh, again have uh, Vineyard Brussels Kids, VB Kids. So that's for uh, kids aged 4 to 12. It will be via Zoom, and it will be done in all languages. And that in itself, uh, my biggest respect to whoever is organizing that one, because that is really <laughs> impressive. Um, I already talked about the other way to get connected, which was the uh, online coffee break that uh, we're also organizing now um, before each Sunday service, so from 10.10 till 10.30 uh, uh, via Zoom, but also during the week. There are a lot of different ways for you to get connected. Um, you just saw the video as well uh, regarding the Alpha course. So already, it has already started uh, last Thursday, 4th of February. But the good news is it really is designed in such a way that uh, even if you haven't followed the, the first uh, course or the first evening, you can still join. So if there is indeed still that one or more person or people in your mind where you're thinking, ah, I should have invited them, there is actually still time to do that, and they're very welcome to uh, join the ongoing Alpha course. Other ways to connect that are currently ongoing, um, or that will soon start, is the uh, PACT, so the counseling training. So that one has actually been postponed from, the start has been postponed from the 16th of January till the 16th of February, so that uh, more of you would be able to join. So if you 
wondered and are interested in getting into more of a counseling, uh, let's say, attitude, this might be indeed an interesting course for you. We also have other things going on, like the prayer course, you know, um, how can you learn more about different types of prayer, how can you practice uh, all in a safe environment. We also have the uh, tribe um, activity, which is for young adults, 18 to 25, which happens weekly on a Sunday. So my question to you is, when you're hearing all these different ways to connect, is there one specific name of a person or multiple people that immediately pops up in your head? Or maybe it might be you indeed for the counseling training or anything like that. So if that is the case, I would really like to encourage you to explore this further. Maybe it's indeed this little, let's say, uh, nudge that you might have needed to take that next step and to actually enroll in this course or to maybe encourage others to uh, do so. Um, now, organizing all of this, uh, you know, it's, it costs money. And this is also why every week we um, repeat the um, request for donations. So you can do that via a lot of different ways. You can use the QR code. You can use the secure link, which you can find in the uh, Facebook uh, live uh, transmission that you see here. You can also find our the bank details uh, on the BB, uh, on the BB, on the, the uh, Vineyard Brussels website, um, and that you know just makes me want to thank everyone that I see here in front of me, uh, our technical team, our interpretation team, you know everyone that is donating their time and their. Um, many talents, together with our uh, worship team as well, to make these types of services happen. So just like, you know, their talents and their donations are much appreciated, your financial donations are also appreciated very much. Um, other ways to connect, you know, if you have specific requests for prayer, for healing, we have specific uh, mailboxes for that where you can get into contact with the right people. That is prayer at vineyard-brussels.be or also healing at vineyard-brussels.be. Uh, vineyard um, other ways to connect, uh, and that of course will depend on, uh, well, how the whole COVID-19 situation evolves and which restrictions will be lifted, but there are uh, plans for a baby dedication service on the 28th of February, or maybe even a baptism service on the 29th of March, but also there, just keep following us, uh, keep following us via uh, our email list, via the community news um, mailing, so that you can keep being informed about what is and isn't happening because, of course, these are <laughs> very unpredictable times indeed. So this is just a short overview of everything that is currently happening in and around Vineyard Brussels. That is a lot. Uh, too much to go into detail here. So this is also why we have our website where you can find all that information uh, and more. Also, how to register, who to contact, etc., etc. So if you haven't done so, just go to our website. Immediately you can go to the calendar there as well. And there you can see what is being organized, when, who to contact, how to register. Um, likely, uh, let's say I'd love to give the, the floor now to Ricky. So I'd just like to pray for him uh, before he comes up. So. Lord, I started today with praying for more connection with you and with each other. And I pray, Lord, that throughout Ricky's sermon this morning, that that can continue indeed. That this connection continues, that you just use Ricky in such a way that you can share more of what you have in store for us in the next season. Also pray, Lord, for our interpreter so that nothing gets lost in translation. In Jesus' name, amen. Ricky. Thank you so much, Dieter. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, church. Good morning, family. Hope you are all doing good. Um, uh, it's Sunday, and we get to hang out together. That's right. The um, uh, Bible says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This morning, I sent a picture of, actually a video, of myself scraping snow off um, uh, my car window to my family in South Africa, and the comments were just hilarious. Um, uh, because if two years ago you had to come to me and you had to say, Ricky, I see you two years from now walking in a, a Belgium forest with snow um, uh, falling all around you, wearing about three or four different jackets and enjoying it. 
Um, I would have told you straight out that you don't know me. <laughs> You've got no clue as to who I am because I'm a son of Africa. I love um, uh, the, the, the heat of the sun on my face. And uh, I, I used to love just wearing shorts and being barefoot everywhere that I went. In fact, I preached barefoot very often. Um, uh, but this last couple of weeks, just as I've been praying in the forest, it's been something that I've been doing, just walking in our forest, and it's been cold, and, and there's been snow, and I've just been looking at, at the, the creation and what God um, uh, is doing and has done, and I've just enjoyed every minute of it. God just reminded me in every season, in every time, in every circumstance, in every situation, He's God. Um, and his heart for us and his love for us remains the same. So today I am so, so incredibly blessed to be able to preach, um, to share the word of God with you. This last week, as Dieter alluded to, um, uh, we've had a lot of our connect groups starting. And uh, I have to tell you, I am so, so blessed by what God is doing in our community. We've, had, we've got more than 300 people that are connecting right now in uh, connect groups around Belgium. And I am so excited um, uh, just for family continuing. No, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter that we're in the, in the middle of a COVID season. People's hearts are still to connect with one and to grow and uh, to become more and that is exciting. Continue. This last week's Alpha for me was a highlight. Just um, uh, how many people came to Alpha that didn't know Jesus. That was so incredible. We had people that's not part of our database, never been part of what we've done before as a church, coming to join in. And that is what we are trusting the Lord for. We had some of our people go down to the Red Cross and feed some of the refugees and just uh, help them with showers. And it's just been incredible seeing how the Lord is just moving in little ways. Um, uh, the church scattered all around Belgium, being the hands and feet of Jesus. And that is what it's all about, yeah? That is what it's all about. It us, it's us tapping into Him, allowing Him to change us, to grow us, to mold us, and use us for His glory. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to get into this morning's message. So wherever you are, sit back, relax, Enjoy, kick off your shoes. I'm sure your shoes are off already. Um, uh, grab a cup of coffee. If you have a Bible, just grab your Bible as well. We are going to get into God's Word this morning, and we are going to enjoy spending time with the Lord. We are going to enjoy being washed by the Word of God this morning. I am going to enjoy being washed by God's Word this morning for me. Um, as I preach and as I teach, I know that as much as I teach, God teaches me and he molds me and he shapes me um, uh, for his purposes on this earth. So Lord Jesus, this morning, we come to you once again and we say, Lord, our eyes are on you. You are the author and the perfecter of our faith. And as Rayani sang this morning, Lord, it's not by might, it's not by power, it is by your spirit. So Father, we pray for an outpouring of your presence and of your power this morning as we look to your word, Father, which is a lamp unto our feet, Lord, and a light unto our path. And we ask you, Lord, to come and to recalibrate our hearts and our minds so that we can look more like Jesus. We can act more like Jesus. We can smell more like Jesus in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. <laughs> All right, guys. So this morning we are going to be talking about back on mission. And this is going to be the theme for the next couple of weeks. We are going to be talking about how we are meant as God's people to be consistently on mission. This last few weeks, um, uh, I have been meditating on the book of Haggai. Uh, Haggai. Haggai 1, chapter 1 and chapter 2 specifically. And I think one of the, 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 the passages that really stood out for me from the book of Haggai was from chapter 1, verse 2. And, um, uh, and uh, the, the, the prophet Haggai, he, he basically quotes, he quotes the Lord and he says, this people... You know, usually when God speaks about his people, he says, my people, or he says, his people. But in this passage in Haggai 1 and verse 2, he doesn't say, my people, if my people who are called by my name. He doesn't say that. He says, this people. This people say that the time has not yet come for the rebuilding of the temple. 
And I feel that as I was busy talking, talking, the, the, talking to the Lord about, about Haggai 1, he just took me back into the context of, of where this book was written in. And uh, the Israelites had, 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 had come back and they were, they were busy restoring the temple, but there was some opposition. They had some difficulty and they'd laid the foundation for the temple, but they did not continue because they got a bit of opposition from the Persians at that point in time and they stopped. And for 16 years, the foundation of the temple was just laying in ruins. And then the prophet Haggai comes onto the scene and he says, guys, it's time for us to build. And God says, hey, these people have said that it's not time yet for the temple to be rebuilt. The time has not yet come. And I felt... Very strongly that the Lord is, is saying, you know what, I've laid some foundations in this church. I've laid some foundations in this community. I've laid some foundation in the churches of the world, and I want to build upon the foundations that I have laid. So before we get into getting back on mission, I want to talk about some of the core things that makes a church a church. I want to talk about some of the, the, the foundational things that we need to, to, to know um, uh, before we go out into the world to let others into what we have come to know as normal. And before we build, let's take a look at what we are building. <laughs> What's the foundation that we are building upon? We don't want to be like the people in the book of Haggai that said, the time has not yet come. We want to say, Lord, it's time for us to build. It's time for us to grow. It's time for us to see those that, that are lost, that are hurting, that are broken. It's time for us to reach them, bring them into understanding of who Jesus is, into relationship with, with you. But what are we bringing them into is the question that I am asking this morning. So some of the core values that undergird who we are as a church is what I want to be chatting about very quickly. When I was called into the ministry many years ago, the, the, the scripture that the Lord called me into the ministry with was Matthew 6 and verse 33. I remember um, I had been running a, an advertising agency at that point in time. And we were doing pretty good. And I had to ask the Lord, Lord, is it time for me to, to, to let go of this advertising agency? Because I had been going to work very often feeling empty. And we were doing well. We had 14 employees. Things were just were, 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 were expanding. We had many government contracts. And, and even though on the outside, everything was going well, on the inside, something was saying, hey, Ricky Fenter, I have called you to more. And as I was struggling with this calling, I remember one day we went to a vineyard conference and, and I said to the Lord, Lord, if you are calling me into the ministry, if you really want me to step out of my business and, uh, and go into the ministry full time, because at that point in time, I had been in ministry already. I had never stopped being in the ministry since the age of, of um, uh, I think, 23, 24. I said, Lord, if you want me to do this full time, um, you need to speak to me this week. And that week, as we were in the conference, um, uh, I said, God, I want you to chat to me five times this week. <laughs> and I remembered as a 15-year-old boy, one day, the Lord as I, was, as, I was, as I was in church and the Lord spoke to my heart, I got a word released over my life to say that, you know what, God's called you to pastor. And the word God gave me at 15 was from Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that week, as I stepped into that conference, I had five different people come up to me and say, Ricky, I, I, I don't know if this means anything to you, but I feel the Lord is saying um, uh, that you should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. 
Then I would get into, I would get into um, uh, the, the, the conference proper and uh, the worship leader starts and he says, man, I just want to stop the worship for a few minutes. I feel that this is for somebody in the building right now. Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. <laughs> and then um, a, a few days went by and, and one of the preachers got up and said, you know what? I just want to preach today from Matthew 6.33. And seven times that week, the Lord confirmed to me, hey, but. I want you to step out of what you're doing into what I have called you to. And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And this was one of, this is one of the core foundational elements of my life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And this is the first principle or the first core value that I want to share with you today um, uh, that underscores what we do as a church Seek first the kingdom. As a church, as a people of God, we put the kingdom of God before all else. We sacrifice comfort, convenience, sentiment, anything else that hinders the breakthrough of God into our lives. There's nothing that God does not have a say into. We say, God, your kingdom first, your purposes first, righteousness, peace, and joy first, God. You come into my life and into my heart. I place you first. No more excuses. <laughs> we understand that our priorities are His kingdom rule in our lives and in the lives of others. We are not locked into our church. And this is so important for us as a vineyard church to understand. Wherever you are, we are not locked into this little expression of church that gathers in Aldergem, 220 Boulevard de Souverain in, 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 in Brussels. We're not locked into this. We are part of a much larger community of Christians that are gathering around the world right now. This is the kingdom of God. It is not a church. It is the people of God that gathers under the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every other name. So when we say the kingdom, we're not talking about this little church. There are incredible churches in Belgium right now that's lifting up the name of Jesus and they're saying, man... We love Him, and the expressions might be different. The way that they do church might be different, but we are seeking the same kingdom and the same purposes. So we're not locked into a church. The second core value that underscores who we are is we are family. We are family. We are family. James 5 verse 16 says, Therefore confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And this is a hard one to live out. Because we want to always place friendships before functions and it's hard. It's hard to get to a place where we, we, we prioritize our relationships before we prioritize what we do for one another. And as a church, we want to nurture and the, the development of friendship. And that's why we are majoring in connect group participation this season. That's why we are majoring in, hey, connect out there. Get into community groups uh, out there. Let somebody know you. Let, let, let and, and be known. Let somebody know your heart. Let somebody know your struggles. Because there's no way that we can live the Christian life by ourselves. We need one another. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. This is who we need to be to one another. We need to be a shoulder to cry on. We need to be someone that we can lean into. We need to be strong arms that, we can, that can be depended upon. This is who we are to one another. We embrace unity amongst believers while embracing our diversities. You see, all of us are different. All of us are different. All of us have different personalities, different characters, different gifts. And we've got to go, man, I'm going to try my best to embrace who you are in Jesus, even though you look different to me, even though you act different to me, even though you think different to me. I want to embrace who you are. Our unity is not in the fact that we agree. Our unity is in Jesus. And that is what we are consistently wanting to push into. 
The third thing that I want to, want to lay as a core foundation for us as God's people. So when we go do mission and we tell people, come, come, we want to show you. We want to come and meet the man at the well. Come and, and join our family. Come and join that which God is doing in us and through us. And we be laying some foundation and we're saying, hey, number one, we prioritize the kingdom. Number two, we are family. Number three, we, we celebrate in worship. We celebrate in worship, Acts 16, um, 25 to 26. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once the prison door flew open and everyone's chains came loose. So as a vineyard church, we prioritize worship firstly as a means of intimacy with God. That it is God and I, and in that place of, of intimacy where God sees my heart and I get to know the heart of God, we are transformed and we are changed. At the same time, we also worship because we want to wage war against the, 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 the flesh and the devil and the, the world. And in our worship, we declare the goodness of God. The world needs to know that we serve a good father. The world needs to know that, 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 that he's not what religion says he is. <laughs> he's a good father that loves them and whose heart is for them. So we celebrate in worship. The fourth core foundation for us as a church is we are the mission and we do mission. We are the mission and we do mission. Matthew 28, 19 to 20 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end end of the earth. I believe that the season has come where we don't just give to mission, but we do mission. That we don't just support mission, but that we are the mission. We are the church that gathers, but we also are the church that scatters. If we look at the history of Vineyard Brussels specifically, one of the key elements that always underscored our vision was a lighthouse. I don't know if, if you've ever been in this building. There was always a picture to my left over there of this lighthouse surrounded by waves. And this was, this was the, 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 the picture that we had, had, had underscored as our vision. We want to be a lighthouse to the city, a lighthouse to this nation. And this next season, I feel that God is saying, yes, I've called you to be a lighthouse, but I've also called you to be a life-saving station. And I look back at history, and I look back at the history of lighthouses, and, and um, uh, especially in the Americas, they, they started these lighthouses because there were reefs, of course, all over in the, in the ocean, and they needed the, the lighthouse to guide people through the reefs, to guide people through the rocks, because very often uh, lighthouses were put in places where there were shipwrecks. But the lighthouse could only shine the light and tell people where not to go. But when there were shipwrecks, there was only one guy in the lighthouse. So what happened was with the evolution of the lighthouse was they started building life-saving stations right next to the lighthouse so that when people did get into accidents, when people did get into shipwrecks, they would launch boats out into the ocean. And instead of just shining the light, they would launch some boats and they would go find those sailors and they would bring them back home and they would look after them, they would care for them. And many of those sailors then stayed and helped others to be rescued. And this is what I feel God is calling us to as a church in this next season, to yes, be a light in the city, but also to be a life-saving station so that we can send people out beyond the breakers to go find those that are lost, broken, or hurting, and bringing them back to a place where they can find safety, and they can find security, they can find healing, and they can find purpose in Jesus Christ. As a church, we all get to play. This is another distinctive of the vineyard. This is another distinctive of our church. We all get to play. Every one of us has an identity in Christ Jesus. Every one of us have gifts. Every one of us have ministries. It's not just certain people. It's not just the, the anointed bishop or the apostle or the prophet. Every person has got a gift, a grace that God has placed inside of them. But our doing is predicated on our being. Be, belong, do. Be, 
belong do. You see, who we are in Christ is so much more important than what we do for Christ. And in a culture where our doing is so much more important than our being, we've got to get back to a place where we recognize, man, I am not my works. I am not the stuff that I get to do. I am firstly a son of God, and my identity is not based upon how effective I am in my job or at the church. My identity is in the, as a son of God. And from that place, we pursue excellence. From that place, we pursue effectiveness because we know and we understand that we are in Him first. We take the priesthood of all believers very seriously. And we are going to encourage this more through our connect groups in this next season once again, where Everybody gets to play. And when we get back to church, we, we practice that. Everybody gets to play. It's not just the pastor that gets to pray. You get to pray. It's not just the pastor that gets to prophesy. You get to prophesy. And we don't just do it here on a stage because you don't need a platform to be effective for Christ Jesus. Wherever you are, you are the church of God. That means you get to play on the metro. You get to play at school. You get to play, you get to play um, uh, at work, in your office. You get to do the stuff of the kingdom everywhere you go because this is who God has called us to be. Empowered evangelicals. That's who we are. Empowered by the grace and the, and the Holy Spirit to live our faith. Not just here, but everywhere we go. Naturally, supernatural people who serve a God that's able to do so much more than we could ever think or even imagine. I've got a couple more I want to get through this morning. I'm laying some foundations. I'm saying, man, we want to go out on mission, if you've just joined us. But we want to make sure that we know what it is that we are calling people into. As a church, we believe that we have the victory. That's my next point. 1 John 5 verse 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. In John 16, 33, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, or take heart, I have overcome the world. And last time I preached, I spoke about the, the, this battle, and I said our battle is not against flesh and blood. Uh, so we are waging war consistently uh, against depressive and oppressive forces that are trying to, to wreak havoc in our lives and we are saying no we are not going to be subject to those forces we are going to overcome in Jesus name we are going to trust the Lord for a joyful life where we don't have peace we are going to trust the Lord for peace where we are living anxiously we are going to trust the Lord for 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 for, for joy and peace in our hearts where our, where our lives, our families are broken, we are going to trust the Lord for families to be restored. We push forward toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. You see, we do not deny that we have troubles. Because the Bible says, in this world you will have troubles. That was Jesus. He said it's going to happen. You will have troubles. But he goes on to say, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I think sometimes we, we camp in our troubles. We set up tent in areas that we were just meant to walk through. Areas that we were just meant to push through or get through. We set up camp in those areas. I, I know this personally in my own life. There are times when, when things are really difficult. This last two weeks has been one of those. Where you really have to push into the more of God for, for yourself and for your own heart. And then God says, hey, bud, you have the decision to make. It's either you're going to stay here in this place saying, woe is me. Or you're going to look to me, the author and the perfecter of your faith, knowing that I began this good work in you and I will bring it to completion. 
So we don't camp in our trials. We don't camp in our difficult times. We get up, we look to Jesus, and we move on towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus because we have the victory. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. We believe in faith, even though we don't see. Faith is the evidence of, like, of things not seen, the, the substance of things hoped for. We believe, we trust, we look forward to that which we cannot see, hoping, praying, trusting that God's got it all in control. He's in my future. He's in my past. He's in my present. And I will not make camp in my difficulties. I will push through. The, other, the next thing is we prioritize marriage, family life. We prioritize healthy singlehood. And we want to program the church in such a way as to encourage and strengthen marriage. We want to encourage families. We want to encourage healthy single life. This is what we want to be doing in the church. That's why we, we, we run course like Alpha Marriage. That's why we've got a youth. That's why we have children's ministry. That's why in time to come we're going to have a... a, a a ministry for those that are over 65 because we are a multi-generational church and we prioritize every area in the life of the church because God, His heart is for every age and stage. That's just the way that it is. And yes, at times you've got to put emphasis on different things, but that doesn't mean that we have lost the plot, and we have said, you know what, we won't emphasize on that right now, or we do not care about that. No, what we are doing by God's grace as a church is, is, is moving from priority to priority as the Lord leads, and putting emphasis and time and energy into those areas where the wall has been broken down. So we trust the Lord for marriages, for family lives, for healthy singlehood in this church. And our connect groups are a primary way for us to do this. The next thing that, that, that sets us apart is, is God's order. We respect God's order. Matthew 20, 26 says, Not so with you. Instead, who wants to become great amongst you must be your servant. But a context. Yep, the disciples were, were walking with Jesus and they were having this big fight about who's going to be the boss. Who's going to be sitting closest to Jesus when we get to heaven? And he said, and Jesus looked at them and says, you know what? The world fights about these things. We don't fight about these things. Whoever wants to be greatest among you has to become the servant of all. So we encourage strong servant leadership. We help one another. We come alongside one another. And we grow one another by God's grace. We recognize and encourage emergence for leadership and other ministries, that we emerge ministry, that as we grow, God releases more to us. We operate with authority in the life of the church, with pastors, elders, staff, connect group leaders, other ministry leaders. And we recognize that we are not a body by ourselves. We also around this, the city as well as our region as well as the world. We, rec we recognize God's order and His authority. Almost there. We are a generous people. We are a generous people. 2 Corinthians 9.17 Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. We recognize as a church that every good and perfect gift has come from him. God gave us what we have. There's nothing that Ricky Fenter owns that has not been given to me by the hand of God. And when I say thank you, or when I give, I give with a grateful heart. I give with a thankful heart because I understand that what I have comes from him. I don't give to get I don't give because, because if I give, God is going to give me this, 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 a boat and an aeroplane, as well as 10 homes in the Maldives. That is, that is not why we give. We give because we have been given to. It doesn't matter if God's given you 10 euros or if God's given you 10 million euros. God has given you something and we give from that place. I remember um, uh, a, 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 a pastor in Malawi who was really, really struggling. And uh, 
He had nothing. Didn't even have shoes on his feet. Didn't have the clothing to wear. And one day he heard just, just, just how God loves a cheerful giver. And he decided that he wants to start giving. So he would go out into his field and he would, he, would, he would do his field. And then he would take a portion of what the Lord has given him. And he would start giving it to others. <laughs> and, and the story is so beautiful and so amazing that as he started to give to others, it, it was such a blessing for him to be able to give to others that, that the Lord just increased him. It increased his fields, increased his crops, increased um, uh, his business. And he was the first one in his family that was able to put all of his children to university. And it all started with a cheerful heart in giving. So we recognize that everything that we have belongs to God. And when we give, we give not to get, but we give because we have been given to. And then finally, for this morning, as we lay the foundation for mission, as we lay the foundation for what we are, what, what we are, are trusting the Lord to bring people into, we pursue holiness and wholeness. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. We recognize the ongoing transformation of God in our lives. You will hear um, in, our, in our meetings, you will hear about being on a journey. We recognize that all people are in different places in their walk with God. Some people have just started. Some people have not even started. Some people are far ahead, but we are all on different places in our walk with God. We are on our journey so that we're there to look like Him, to act like Him, to be like Him. We understand holiness to be Christ-likeness. We want to look more like Jesus. We want to act more like Jesus. We want to be more like Jesus. And in order for us to be more like Him, we need to spend more time with Him. We need to spend more time in His presence. We need to spend more time getting to know His heart. We've got to spend more time listening to His voice so that His Word washes over us and changes us from glory to glory, from strength to strength, that His Spirit empowers us to be able to live the life God has called us to live. And this is holiness and wholeness. You see, we recognize that we are all wounded healers. Every one of us has a past. Every one of us has pain. We recognize that every one of us, even now, might be struggling with some stuff that we don't have the victory over as of yet. And we do not hold those things against one another. We pray for one another and we trust the Lord for each other. And we ourselves push into the more of Jesus so that we can look like him and act like him. And as I said earlier, we can smell like him. We have not arrived as of yet. We pursue our healing. Recognizing that the more whole we are, the more healthier and effective we become. Help us, Lord, to become whole. Help us, Lord, to become holy. Help us to look more like you, to act more like you, to be more like you as the church of God. We are calling people in to walk along a journey with us. But I can tell you, as I look through these core values that underscore who we are as a church, we are still growing in these ourselves. Somebody once said, there's no such thing as a perfect church. He says, if you are looking for a perfect church, when you find it, don't join it because you are going to mess it up. We are not perfect. I am not perfect. This church is not perfect. But if we recognize that there is a moving towards the more of Jesus, 
when we recognize that there is grace for us to change and to grow and to act like Him and to be like Him, to, to, to do like Jesus did, when we recognize that grace, we can say, yes, I can become part of that because I myself am still on a journey and I will have grace for your journey. I will have grace for where you are in your walk with the Lord. And when we come into an environment like that, we can feel safe enough to know that I can change. I can become more. Because I'm not condemned. I am not judged. I'm loved. I'm loved. And we pray that this would be what underscores our walk together in Jesus. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the way you love one another. You see, I build all my relationships on love and trust. And this is the foundation upon which we as God's people have to build our lives. The love of Jesus Christ that changes us, molds us, and helps us to grow into everything that God has spoken over our lives. So today, Church of God, You've listened to some of the core foundations and some of the core things that make us who we are. And you've said, you know what, I still need to, to work on this. I still need to, to, to have more of that in my life. Maybe you have never been to a church before and you're like, man, Ricky, wow, that, that, sounds, that sounds good, but I just haven't seen it. I'm, I'm so disillusioned with the church and I'm so disillusioned with leaders. I'm so disillusioned with, with how things are done. I, 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 that, that's nice, but I don't, I don't see that. And this morning, I, I want to pray that once again, the Lord would, would, would place our lamp back on its lampstand and that we would be light to the city and we would also be a life-saving station that goes out into this nation to see people's lives changed and transformed in the name of Jesus. So let me pray this morning. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to touch your heart where you are. Would you do me a favor, if you feel so inclined, would you just close your eyes? and Would you become aware of God's presence because he's there with you right now? And I want to ask him just to highlight to you some stuff in your own life and in your own heart where, where you still need God to come and bring healing and restoration. I want to ask that he, he comes and he highlights Areas of your life where you are still on the journey and you need his empowering presence to help you. Father, we thank you that you are not finished with us yet. We thank you, Lord, that we are works in progress. That as a church, we are a work in progress. And even though, Lord, these are foundational for us as a church, we are still growing in so many of these things ourselves. And as we go out on mission, Lord, as we go out, Lord, to let people know about your grace, Lord, about your mercy, about your love, Father. Help us to establish, Lord, your truth in the midst of our being, in the midst of our community, in the midst of our communities as a church, universal, so that the world might see that we are different, and we do different, and we love different. We need you, Lord. We cannot do ministry without you. We cannot do life without you. And we ask you, Lord, to come and to change us, to transform us, to make us more like you. Help this church, Lord, to be a sweet-smelling fragrance in this nation, to be a sweet-smelling fragrance in our families and our relationships at work. Help us, Lord, to be this lighthouse that you've called us to be also help us to be a life-saving station. We might be able to reach out to those that are shipwrecked, Lord, right now on the rocks of life and navigate, Lord, the difficulties and navigate the rocks, Lord, and, and go throw out the lifeline and bring them back, Lord, to the safety of your presence. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to grow us to mature us, 
Lord, where we have, have remained stunted in our growth, would you come and grow us? Where we have become comfortable, would you shake us? In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for people that don't know you to come to you in this season. We pray that you'd stir up in us as a church a hunger for the lost, a hunger for those who don't know you, a desire, Father, to connect them to your love. Let our motivation be your love. Let our heart be your love. Let our motivation be your hope and your peace. Let our motivation be the joy that we are found in you. That as we share, Lord, we are not sharing a church. We are sharing life and hope in Christ Jesus. We love you and we thank you for this opportunity we have to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. All right, family, we bless you. Thank you so much for joining today. Next week, we're going to continue with Back on Mission. Um, uh, and I pray that um, uh, the Lord will, will, will touch your life and touch your heart. I'm going to be putting my notes on the internet, yeah, um, on, our, on our Facebook page. I'm going to ask Loic just to put all of my notes on the Facebook page for this week. And I want to ask if you're a member of this church, a member of this body, just to go back and to read through some of these core values, to read through some of these things that underscore or undergird who we are as God's people, so we can refresh ourselves in an understanding of who we are and what God has called us to be as a church operating right here in Brussels, in Belgium. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you incredible peace and joy this week. In Jesus' name, amen.